right. Let's uh let's start this seed. Why why don't we? Whoa, is this is this accurate? Look at this start. We have two food items in the starting room. Two potions, a scroll, and a wand. What an entrance, and some blood wort. I, I like this seat already. I like it already. I'm gonna go and grab the scroll immediately because I'm afraid of it burning up somehow. We may as well grab the rest of these things. Ooh, a wand hiding in the grass? That wand symbol is almost like a little snake in the grass, too. I found you, though. Uh, let's go check this room, because it looks isolated. Uh, it does connect. Chainmail. Where's the exit? Oh, I was wondering this because I was playing 175 recently. Oh, this is so confusing. Th this this messes me up all the time and I didn't know why until I was wondering about it recently or like this week when I was playing um, Rogue Vanilla. In Vanilla Brogue, when you search, the search bar ticks down. In Community Edition, it ticks up. That is weird. So I'll be playing like vanilla and there'll be like one little bar on the left, like filled for the search bar. And since I've been playing a lot of CE, I'll be like, oh, I must have like accidentally started a new search after finishing the last one. So I'll cancel my search. And then I actually didn't search anything. That's interesting. I wonder why it's like that. I wonder if we should try and ID these wands. No, because we're still concerned about polymorph, right? We have to be careful of polymorph. go across this water. So that's the whole floor, right? Five potions, a scroll, two wands, a chainmail, a food ration, a mango. What a start. Kobold to wake up. I don't want to end up fighting the Kobold and the Goblin at the same time.
at this hidden door. Hidden behind the grass. Plate armor. A monkey ally. I'm guessing the exit's over here, so I kind of want to go explore here first. Oh, the exit is right there, okay. to find gold we have to pick up gold in this run so let me grab that peek over there blood work by the exit always nice to see I room for nine more items in my pack oh that is an eel I think this monkey's just gonna die to the eel immediately. Maybe. Nice. I, I killed the, the eel with a sneak attack. That's how you do it. Your monkey defeated the monkey. Way to go, bud. Let's see, room in our pack for six more items. You saw a post on Rogue Forum asking if CE added more eels to the game. <laughs> yeah, that's a great uh, example of variant paranoia. And that's just actually hilarious to think about. The community has gotten together and decided what Brogue needs is more eels. Pender's vision is almost perfect, but the community demands more eels. Ourselves a banded mail and a warhammer. Ooh, I wonder if we can play warhammer this run. I've never played a, a mace build. I would definitely like to try that. Mm, this is awkward. Sorry, monkey, but I was not getting stabbed to help you. <laughs> this feels like um, an eel key holder. I mm, guess not. Ah, uh, this is some kind of key holder. Right? Secret door key holder or reward room. I wonder how many people missed this. That looks like it's very easy to miss because you'd have to walk all the way to the other end of the room to search for it. 
Wow, this is a cool stash. Ring of Light, Stealth, Clairvoyance, or Regeneration. I've grown to have a, a great appreciation for Clairvoyance, even though it doesn't feel like a key build item. I think in the Luminstone Depths, it's like extremely nice to have. Uh, regeneration is probably the safest thing to grab now, but Warhammer and Stealth feels like something fun we can do, and I've never really done a build like that. I don't know if a Stealth Ring and a Warhammer alone are tools enough to, to play towards that, but that could be fun. We have a Chainmail is probably decent stealth armor if it were like enchanted. It only has plus one stealth range over leather and scale, which means plus two and light, I guess. I wonder what that plus one turns into when you're when you're standing still. It, it probably rounds down, right? So it doesn't have an effect. I think we're meant to take the Ring of Regeneration for now and strongly consider leaning towards stealth. I don't know if stealth and Warhammer alone is enough to, to play that build, although I'm tempted to do it anyways, just to try it. I'm really tempted just to try it. I think to make the Ring of Stealth work, we need like it to be highly enchanted. And the Warhammer you can't be used right away either with our strength. Because even with leather armor, our stealth range is seven. We probably want that to be like extremely low. So we probably want like five-ish enchantments before we even like can really play into that. Like I said, I haven't played the build before, I'm just guessing. Let's just grab regen for now. I don't really feel like playing the safe play this run though. So I might come back for stealth. I'm hoping we find like one more tool that makes it like a no-brainer on the next floor. Goblin ally. Stealth ring plus three drops to one SR on resting and normal light plus six while illuminated. If you're resting with one stealth range, so the the corners have no stealth range, but the orthogonal directions do. If an enemy walks into that stealth range to like northwest, east, south of you, then you're guaranteed a sneak attack, right? Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, the timing thing with um, enemies spotting you that I don't understand well and I, I need to like learn is I know sometimes I could be wandering and then you can make an action in their vision to like leave their vision and they can swap to hunting when you do that but you never know it because you left their vision on a turn when they were still wandering or it's like they don't update their um, their AI and the UI doesn't update until like a turn later or something. There's some kind of oddity there that I don't, I don't know the complete rules about. Oh, hey Heb, um, just wanted to pop in and say you've been enjoying the Taurus NetHack Let's Play on YouTube. You know, you're, you're years late, but it's excellent. Awesome, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, people really uh, love that, that Let's Play. And it took a lot of time to put together, but I'm glad I did it because there hasn't been 
a lot of uh, great NetHack content on YouTube, especially when I started that, which is why I embarked on that. And when I do stuff like that on YouTube, I intend for it to be lasting content. So I'm glad that people are still using it and getting value from it. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Oops, I did not even see the jackal attacking me. Do bogs have a less... Oh, the conjurer has gold. Do bogs have a less chance of... I always forget how to play conjurers. There's some, like, AI tricks you can use to beat them, but I don't know what they are all the time. Um, the thought I was going to have earlier was, do bogs have a less chance of having eels in them than um, lakes do? Or, like, different death requirements? Because I feel like I don't see eels in early bogs very often. Ooh, look at that sneak attack. We got our first duplicate scroll. I'm supposed to start throwing stuff down this chasm, right? Hey, what's up within wheels? Thank you. Now, Goblin Ally is actually pretty good. We should go save this dude. wonder how many goblins are protecting him, because he's at a corridor, which is a little awkward. I can step in and free the goblin, and then he immediately helps us, but he also potentially dies. You know what's interesting? Is the uh, the goblin isn't hurting the captive goblin right now. I think I'm just supposed to free this goblin. I don't really care if he dies, right? Oh my god, he died immediately. <laughs> oh, he died so fast. I thought he'd take a few hits. Well, I can just leave now. I feel like my character right now is the person that, like, buys a plant and it just, like, dies. Like, they just have no capability of, like, nourishing other creatures. Oh, that's tough stuff. And that Bloodwort pod grew back fast. Um, oh, the exit's all the way over there. Do I jump down the chasm? Uh, probably not. We have a lot of food, and D4 is when that starts getting a little sketchy. I gotta tell you guys, I have grown an extreme appre appreciation for axes and swords. The strength 15 weapons, like, you can start using them pretty much right away, and they will, like, carry you up to, like, death 15 or so. It's, like, such a massive improvement over your starting ring, or your starting dagger. I was looking at my ring of regeneration as I said that. Joke's on you when you get a res altar to show up later. I 
And then the goblin comes back and like saves us. Now that would be a redemption story. Um, let's go check the bottom left. This must be where all my items are. Either that or they're over here. It looks like the top like wraps around though. There's a secret door over here. No. A locked iron door. I was supposed to move down so that the goblin walked into me and I didn't get attacked. Approaching that conjurer at low health might have been a not great play. But we're fine. So can we count this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Are you actually guaranteed a vault between D1 and D4? Because I didn't know that. So you could get this far and not realize that you missed a vault because you got the last one and it just seems like a low probability vault seed. That is cruel. Hey, lots of loot. Sneak attack in. Icebox with the 20 months of subscriptions. Thank you so much, sir. How are you doing this evening? Or morning? Evening? I guess it's afternoon for you. Welcome to the stream and thank you for the sub. Dude, where is... Oh, okay. How does this work? We get, like, locked in with a gas vent, right? Is, is there... There's, like, a lever? How do you survive this? Because this can, like, kill you if you don't find the lever, right? Or rats. Rats would be the other option. Oh yeah, what is, what is it, like paralysis gas and rats? Hmm. I think what we do here... Is throw stuff down this chasm? Oh wait. I don't want to do that, do I? Because I might end up reading Detect Magic on this floor, depending on what's in that vault. I can throw the food, but I shouldn't throw down the Warhammer like I just did. The alarm trap here. All right, let's finish exploring this level. I'm actually kind of concerned about that key holder. I don't even know why I walked up to that rat. There's no reason to fight them. Throw them down, then bring them back up. That's what we're going to be doing. <laughs> For the Warhammer. It depends what's in this vault. Okay, I have room for one item slot. 
I think IDing some potions before doing this key holder could be useful in case we need like something to get out. But also, I don't know if we're going to have anything useful and reliable to get out. Let's just YOLO it. Oh, we were immediately paralyzed. Okay. Did we just die here? Oh my god. <laughs> I thought we'd be able to walk away from the paralysis. Um, I think we're supposed to equip this axe and pray. Wow, what a cruel key holder. When I've had this before, I was always able to like walk away from the paralysis or like the rats were like in it automatically. Where's this ring of regen at? 557 turns. I'm gonna equip the ax. No, we just die here, huh? I don't have any strength yet. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm gonna die this easily. <laughs> I knew this key holder was a problem, but I did not think I could end up in this position so easily with it. We're probably holding strength, but it's not going to help us, right? Well, these only do 16% of our current health, actually. We do need the yellow potions, and we're looking for life or strength. One strength pot would improve our odds of hurting these guys a lot. One strength pot might, might even make us like instant kill like all of them. So I think we have the yellow potions. Um, so I still haven't researched like the generation odds of like strength and life and an enchant yet like I'd like to at some point but I think the two stacks are probably likely to be strength and life is likely to be somewhere else we're likely dead in two turns on average if I can't kill these rats or do anything else. And any of these negative potions kills us. Yeah. Well, not any of them, but they're, they're definitely not good here. All right, so this is yellow. Confusion actually works pretty well for us. Okay. Do I just sit here? I don't think we want to move because I don't want to get out of this corner where I can get attacked by all the rats. I think if I just wait here, things work out for us. Oh god, one spawned next to me. So the question is, do we keep drinking potions? So if I try to move right now, there's a one, two, three, and four chance that I hit a rat. I think I attack. Yo. This rat that just spawned can chain kill you while you're paralyzed. Oh. Can... Will the gas not move onto that rat's tile? I guess it doesn't... I, I see how that happens, because the gas diffuses, and then if, when it's in the retraction state, and that opens up, you sit in it, but it won't expand. All right, we killed a rat. No, the rat defeated the rat. I think the chances of us killing it and then getting in there are extremely low. The rats are dispersing though, so I think we're a little bit more open to moving out. Especially in a position where this rat's gonna hit us every turn right now. 
Okay, I'm actually surrounded by rats again. Which is good because I can swing on them, right? Two of them are almost dead. I wonder if I start drinking potions again. I think I might. I'm just afraid of caustic gas. I don't think I survived this just on the... Just with having confusion here. Random using scrolls here isn't bad. I feel like summon monsters and aggravate monsters don't make the situation that much worse when we're in confusion gas already. And I feel like identify and teleport save us. Well, don't save us, but identify helps me pick a good potion. That's not a huge advantage over just drinking a random potion, though. I think we roll on the two Scarlets here. Creeping Death. That's not good. That's not good at all. Um, I think I just keep rolling potions and I need to look for life now. Which we're pretty likely to have life at this point. I think the latest you can get one is on D5. The first one. So we should be very likely to have a life pot right now. Let's just go through. Life. Oh yeah. Okay. Now I think now that we've used life, I start walking. There's a lot of open space around me. Or we kill rats, and I want to get out of the, the poison. Wow, it actually moved in the direction I told it to. Am I in? I can't tell where the creeping death is. I wonder if I'm supposed to start throwing darts. That's probably a good move, right? God, these rats are like endless though. We do want to just like use... We, we want a strength potion. We want to like kill these things with our axe, I think. I guess killing the ones that are close to me. Well, they're not likely to hit me anyways now that I'm in the open and so are they. All right. Yeah, darts can clear hurt rats. That's what I was thinking. All right, I'm gonna keep drinking potions. Is that too risky? I wonder if I do go for scrolls. Because we're in like a decent position now. And if I roll like caustic gas, we'd just die. I think I'm not supposed to drink potions more. I think I'm just supposed to sit. I'm not in poison currently. That'll probably change soon. Try to walk out. Isn't my movement completely random? Which means we're not likely to get in any direction. And all these rats are grouped up. They're going to like hit each other. Or is there only a chance of moving randomly when you're confused? I kind of like just waiting right now. Okay, this rat is not confused. But he is darted. It's not unreasonable to eventually random walk out. I'm I, I might have been more open to that without the creeping death here.
Dude, I love how the rats are just walking through the creeping death as well. Okay, that rat needs to die. Will I get less confused by the time it gets to me? Not likely. I need to just throw darts at it. It's dead. Oh, wait. This guy's not confused anymore. Boom. Easy. That's exactly how I thought that would go. All right. We have a wand of teleportation. Thank you, uh, Vault, for IDing that for us. Given that the two stack was confusion, you wonder whether throwing it down before grabbing the key helps survive. Well, I think the paralysis... What? That's actually a good question, because the confusion has more gas density than the... The paralysis vent. So I don't know how how much displacement the paralysis would do to the confusion. I think you could throw it after the paralysis came out to like almost completely dispa displace the paralysis gas. And confusion works really well against rats. So I, I think what I did there was definitely the wrong thing to do, and I I misjudged this this key holder entirely. I thought I was going to have time to get away from the paralysis gas, because usually it starts on one tile, but in this case, it was on me the turn I stepped onto the tra or the altar. So I thought it would be one tile here. I probably still don't get away from this, but I thought maybe I could move here and get out. And also, I've had this before where the paralysis just like paralyzes the rats, and then it's like fine. But yeah, that's definitely not the way to play this. The paralysis instantly catching you is probably 100%. So that's just like part of the design of this thing, and I didn't appreciate that either. Right. right, the paralysis would probably not spread. So it might just be one tile of paralysis. Now, the other thing with that is if you throw the confusion down first. You have to throw it far enough away that you can actually not be confused and step onto the altar. And then the rats will spawn outside of the confusion gas. And they won't be confused, but you will be. So that's still a problem as well. Paralysis, or yeah. Incinerating the... Pro I was looking for obstruction, like firebolt. I was looking at my options before entering there, but we just didn't have any. Interesting. Okay. That, dude, that was... That was fun. That was a fun start to this weekend contest. Like, things can only go up from here. What a... What an adventure. So this vault is interesting. Um, the haste charm sounds like a really nice combo with the Warhammer. We have a second shot at a Ring of Clairvoyance here, but it doesn't feel quite as sexy at the moment. Um, slash two staff of poison doesn't sound amazing. I'm intrigued to test the sword out, but we're like running out of room to like backtrack. I feel like. What I would like to do, I think, is try to detect magic on this floor. And maybe if the sword is magic, we test it out. But we're also in a position where we want to try and get detect magic anyways. I don't know if we actually have detect magic, now that we've drank a lot of our potions already. We definitely want to find strength, so I think drinking more potions is a good option here. So... Here's what I'm going to do. We need to go back and get our Warhammer before we use 
detect magic. So I probably put something on and try to ID it while we're like going down to the floor below. I threw one Warhammer down here before realizing that I needed the detect magic. So I can either bring the sword down or one of the armors. I think if the armor is positive, I don't... I'm not going to be testing them out because it's harder to like identify armor like that. Now, if I come back up and the sword is enchanted, we probably test it anyways, but maybe we can save our time just by bringing the sword now. Let's just do that. A sword only has 14 strength requirement. That is interesting. Oh, come on. No procs yet. Um, I need to heal. Runic proc chances become neglig negligible if you aren't strong enough. Right, so they basically drop to the chances of a quote unquote plus zero weapon. Is that how that works? They become pretty damn low. Here's. This is either new food or the food I threw down. But my Warhammer's not there. There it is. Here's the food I threw down. All right, what negative potions do we have left? Caustic gas, paralysis, hallucination, incineration, darkness, and descent. I think we try these right here. What I like about um, quaff IDing potions near stairs is that if it's a gas, you can just walk out, out the stairs. I guess being in rooms works pretty well for that too. Fire and strength. All right. Being by the open chasm can help with gases. Yeah. Levitation. Oh, what did I pick up downstairs? I want to make sure I'm not ruining a vault right now. I think that was a strength potion though. Crimson, yeah, that was the strength pot. Hey, darkness. Okay, so no detect magic yet. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use the sword for the like the next floor or so. Now that I'm 14 strength, our proc chances are probably decent if it's a runic. So we'll see if anything procs. I'm not going to kill 20 enemies with it, but we'll kill like 5 to 10. And I think that's enough to figure out if it's runic in most cases. And then we're going to decide whether we want something other than this regen ring. Where are we at with this ring, by the way? 300 turns? Maybe that's our benchmark. I really just, I don't know if it's the best move. It probably isn't. I really want to try Warhammer, Stealth Ring, Haste Charm. That sounds like a fun combination of items. Hey, what's up, Marlon? Welcome. We do have a lot of 
potentially good armor here, which probably doesn't combo incredibly well with stealth. I mean, the banded mail is only plus three to our stealth range. It becomes plus six in light. That's when it starts to really punish you, is when you're in light. I never played like a conscious stealth build, so I don't know how prominent light is and how much it messes you up. I'm sure like you're, I'm, I bet you you're, it's always screwing you up. Well, being darkened also kind of sucks. Everything is annoyingly lit. Yeah, I had the, the feeling. So, I don't really know how to... Oh my god, the darkness lasts so long. Well, we have a one to teleportation. If I need to, like, zap some kind of scary enemy away. I guess we're just gonna bumble into traps. Yeah, and Ogre is the one thing that probably kills us. <laughs> like, just ends our run if we walk in. Well, we have the teleport wand. So we're probably okay, but that's like the scariest thing. Maybe getting surrounded by vampire bats could be bad. Oh, here's a jelly. Um, we're actually fine against jellies, though. Because I have an axe. I'm going to even equip my sword. Oh, I forgot I was levitating. I should have went into that bog. I had like way too many status effects to even pay attention to them. I like that there's blood wart down here. Man, so with darkness, you can't you can't search for traps, and you walk on like every tile, so you end up like almost guaranteed to step on traps. Dude, I feel a secret room here. It's not like I can search. That's a lot of jackals. Um, axe time. Dude, this axe is clutch. Stray Basilisk, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, guys. We are playing the Brogue Weekend Contest today, and it has been full of excitement so far. I'm going to do some searching over here now that I have a bigger um, light radius. Uh, yeah, so in Brogue every week, and it's been going on for like five years, there's a weekend contest. It's been, it's been going on longer than five years, actually. Where everyone plays the same seed, and whoever has the highest score wins. It's not really about winning, though. It's about, like, comparing notes with other players, which is a lot of fun. So I've been doing this every week since I got into Brogue almost uh, two months ago now. Okay, well, the darkness is almost gone. I haven't gotten any procs on this sword yet. I think we need to go back soon. Um, score is just based on gold, but also winning gives you a lot of score. Oh, that's an awkward trap. So if you win, if you can like win, things get like pretty interesting. Plus 
plus two regen ring. That's pretty solid. Yeah, you can take it like extreme risk, like after you get the Amulet of Yendor on D26 and go deeper under these really dangerous levels and grab Lumen Stones, which are worth 5,000 points each. If you can make it to D40, it doubles, it gives you another 35,000 points. So, winning, usually, from what I've seen so far, gives you a pretty good chance to just like win outright. Um, but if there's multiple people winning, like whoever gets the most Lumen Stones usually ends up winning. There's probably some strategy where you like gauge how easy the seed was or what tools it gave, gave you and guess how like many other people probably have a winning run. How many enemies have we fought with the sword so far? We killed five enemies and saw no procs. I don't feel like the sword is runic. I'd like to kill like one more enemy. But I'm not feeling like this is runic. I think we need to make some decisions here. So we had the ring vault. Has a ring of regeneration. A ring of clairvoyance. A ring of light and a ring of stealth in it. And the other vault, the interesting things, well, you know what else is an interesting, a safe option from the vault upstairs that we took the sword from? Is there was armor in there, but it was what, like chain and leather? It wasn't great armor. But since we don't have detect magic, um, being able to put on like good armor would be nice. What is chain's base armor value? Five? That's not really worth it. I think I grabbed the haste. I, I, I'm gonna. Go, I really want to play this Warhammer stealth build. I guess the one other consideration with the Warhammer stealth build is if we end up wanting to use this plate armor, or the banded doesn't work with it. But with that build, we end up doing what? We put enchants into the Warhammer, the Ring of Stealth. That's still speculative because we don't know if any of this stuff is usable yet, in particular the Warhammer. And we can't use the Warhammer yet, but we have another weapon that's fine. We have the axe, which will carry us until we can actually use the Warhammer. If these are enchant, we'll probably do a third enchant scroll here. We could get the Warhammer down to 17 strength requirement. We're getting reasonably close to having the Warhammer. Yeah, there was a stealth ring in the the vault with the regen ring. I keep saying I want to play these safe, and this is not the safe route, but I, I want to play that. So that's what we're going to do. I think that could be fun. I've never played a stealth build. I've never played a Warhammer build. I think we're going for that. Here's the other consideration do i test one of these armors for respiration real quick because we could probably find like a trap to step on on our way up yeah i'm not gonna bother we'll get a few more kills to id the the sword but we're, we're, we're going for the the fun build here I think regenerating this axe and like some plate armor has like a really, and then like maybe the Warhammer later. I, there's like a pretty easy route to a normal win here, I think, without doing what we're about to do. But I like to try new things. Let's go for it. Stealth ring. Um, let's see what these goblins do. All right. I'm gonna fight them in the door, right? All 
Alright, I think I'm gonna leave the stealth overlay on. Since we're actually playing stealth. Toad. Oops, I spent one turn too many. You see a warden? Dude, that scared me for a second. <laughs> you see a warden of Yendor. I've never had that, like, that hallucination, like, oh yeah, I forgot I was hallucinating before. That was fun. Oh, I'm glad this stuff isn't hallucinated. Oh, I'm not hallucinating anymore. It would have been. Okay. All right, so put the sword down. Grab the haste charm. So in my limited experience with haste charms, they've been one of the funnest items you can use. Or charms. Or funnest isn't even the right word. Like one of the most effective charms without committing a lot of enchants to it. Like a plus three haste charm recharges in like two to three hundred turns or something like that. Like, you can get so much value out of it. Yeah, look, if I enchant this to plus two, it's already down to 347 turns. Like, you get incredible value out of haste charms with, like, not a lot of enchants. I think they're one of the better charms I've seen. Part of me wants to go up here, but I think this has to be wall. It's the edge of the map. All right, um, I need to equip a weapon. Let's put this axe on. And let's continue. Man, what a fun run so far. That, that key holder with the rats was epic. I'm removing my inventory for three more items. Lots of chasms this run. Oh my god, a fire trap? That is so mean. It's starting to feel like enchantment. Possibly, probably guaranteed to be enchantment. A three stack of scrolls right there. So we, we don't get enchantment or enchant value out of the Ring of Stealth until it's identified. But that's probably the one thing that we could safely start enchanting right away once it's ID'd. Uh, Haste Charm's not bad either, but we want to get our core build, which is going to be Warhammer Stealth probably going. I can't enchant the Warhammer yet, because it was like minus three. I mean, that, that's rough stuff. <laughs> so we really need to find out if that's even like, like non-curse first. And we have enough scrolls that we could probably, eh, I don't know if that's quite enough. We have four scrolls basically. And we need to either roll for ID or remove curse. Yeah, it's tough to like blind equip and start reading scrolls right now, I think. We're down to D6. We have one life potion so far. There's another potion of strength. We can now use our axe effectively. That's a, a huge boost. How many kills do I have to ID the axe? Six more enemies?
Oops, I did not mean to move like that. All right, how many turns? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gotcha. Oh, look at the hidden gold. That could be the difference between winning the contest and not winning it. Check every tile. There's just a kobold. I'm not even going to count the tiles. Acid mound. Um, we could use our dagger against that. Oh my god, there's another one. Remove leather, equip, dagger, it's hunting. I think I want to kill it with a dart. A wielded dart. So throw dart. I never did this before, I don't know how well this works. Equip dart. Doesn't do a lot of damage, does it? It's probably not better than punching you now. I still have an 83% chance to hit you. Should Light Slash Shadow be more prominently shown in stealth overlay? Been thinking about how to call it out more clearly visually without just. Yeah, that would be pretty nice, actually. I don't know off the top of my head the best way to do that, but I think that'd be pretty good. I hate acid mounds. That's another one that's a goblin. Oh, we're playing CE. So searching with a stealth build is like really nice. Oh, that might be a fourth. Enchant scroll. Which, if we start using the Warhammer, we could get the strength requirement down to 14 right away. Or we could get our stealth range down to zero, or to one very quickly. Dang. Alright. Feeling this build. I gotta remember I have this haste charm. Um, I have room in my pack for one more item, so if I go over there, I have to pick up two items. Um, oh, I can, I can get rid of this dart. Out of my face. Oh my god, there's a ton of items over here, actually. How do I handle this? Am I supposed to... Yellow more potions? Probably. Descent incineration, Hallelujah paralysis, cost of gas. Ooh. I don't think incineration potions can uh, burn scrolls, but I'm not going to risk it. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to the starting dagger to deal with acids. Oh, this probably wasn't the best place to read Caustic Gas, was it? Not a terrible place either, but we could have played that a little smoother. What's left now? Para, Halu... Using incineration descent, 
stairs are right here if we get descent. Paralysis could be bad. It's funny about paralysis, you either want to use it somewhere where an enemy is not likely to walk into you, which is probably means it's not a great place for it to disperse, or like in the open where it will disperse quickly. This is probably a good paralysis space, actually. Invis? Sweet. Oh, the eel can see me? Come on, dude. Alright, well, no detect magic yet. Um, I have room in my pack for two more items. I have a dagger, food, potion. Three items to pick up. Uh, we have a lot of scrolls now. So I think we need to start using scrolls. We want to do it in... I think I... Did I see, like, a dead-end corridor? Which would be, like, perfect for uh, summon monsters. No, I think we just use that in a corridor somewhere. Um, it's probably better to blind equip the Warhammer and then start reading. At the very worst, if it's Curse, we have to use an enchant scroll to get rid of it, which seems fine at this point. So I'm just gonna... And equipping the Warhammer first means if we get Protect Weapon, then we're, we're set. Hey, it's Cursed. Awesome stuff. Am I supposed to yellow armor too? In case we get protect armor? Probably not, right? Because then we might end up having to use two <laughs> remove curse scrolls or two enchant scrolls to stop that. You would yellow the chain? We're hoping for Remove Curse, but Remove Curse will affect the chain from inventory. So it's basically, the question is whether we want to risk wasting a Protect Armor. The chain only gives us plus one armor, unless it's enchanted. I don't think the value is really there. I'm not going to put the chain mail on, I think. The thing that equipping it first does is tell us if it was cursed or not before we hit remove curse, which is interesting. Um, I think I'm not going to put it on, though. I think if we wanted heavier armor, I'd probably YOLO it. But I'm not going to YOLO the chain here. And we don't really want heavier armor because we're kind of playing around stealth. All right. Nice, I got a plus zero dart. Dang it, and I wanted that negation for the, the Warhammer, potentially. I was considering dropping one of the armors and just letting negation hit it, but... Now, what that does mean, if I find another negation scroll, we're set with this Warhammer. But we might not see one all game. Oh, I got a push and a life. That's pretty sweet. I love how we get our dart back. <laughs> Shattering, eh? Master play recover dart, I know, right? That was epic. I feel like I'm supposed to go and try and sneak attack this acid. Oh! I wonder if I'm supposed to wait for the shattering to occur to get a better sneak attack on it. I'm going to keep yellowing scrolls here. Protect weapon. Awesome. Does negation remove 
Oh yeah, we're stuck with the Warhammer. I can't really sneak attack it. No, I, I was going to put on the dagger to do that. Does negation remove protection? I wonder if we have ID here. I, I want to keep yellowing scrolls here. Although I'm probably not supposed to. Negate does kill protect, you think? I'd love to be able to ID the Warhammer. I guess IDing the Warhammer isn't a play here, right? So the consideration is, do we still lean into the Warhammer if we're at minus one? If it's like minus one and no runic, do we just say, screw it, I'm going to enchant it? Probably not, right? So we're probably leaning into negation here, in which case we don't care what it has now. And we probably play for another weapon. Any of the big weapons plays pretty well with the stealth build, I think, so... Okay, I think we sit stand pat for now. And we haven't used any enchants yet. We're actually not incredibly committed to stealth at the moment. We still have plate armor and a haste charm. We'd probably want that plus two regen if we weren't playing stealth, but I don't, I'm not going back for that at any point. I don't know. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to see if I can sneak attack the acid mound with my dagger, which is all the way over there. Oh, shoot. I just started bumping into an eel with my warhammer. Well, I hit it once and saw no runic effect. Dude, I just wrecked the eel with that warhammer. <laughs> Who cares if it's minus 12.5? Call you the eel crusher. Alright, let's put the axe on. Shoot, you saw me, dude? Um, oh, I killed this guy with the the Warhammer now, right? Is that the play? It's probably better than my fist. Remove my leather. Get wrecked. Acid Mount Crusher. Useful weapon now that CE has clearly added plus two eels into every pond. <laughs> exactly. You, you need an eel crusher. Give me my dart back. Um, have we full explored this level? It looks like it. Except for all these little secret rooms full of items we probably missed. Negation does strip protection. Okay. Oh god, this room. Plus zero X. I kind of assumed that was is what it was. Um, potion of speed. It's still nice with the haste charm. Wait, my darts won't stack. That's interesting. This, so... Once you get you get a uh, corroded dart, it must become a new stack, which we know that happens because you can't pick it up in another stack, but it won't remerge with the previous stack. Now that is interesting.
You wonder if eels only generate in ponds rather than bog tiles? Um, that is an interesting question. all these arrows. This is an interesting room. I guess there's a path up here that goes to the whole left side of the map. Secret door. Stealth range one, hold up. Why is my stealth range one? Because I'm in darkness. I thought you said it needed to be plus three to get that. Hang on, I want to refresh my, myself on the stealth rules. Oh, it was plus three for normal light. All right, I'm actually gonna bring you guys into this as well. We're gonna, we're gonna read this together. Here's the wiki. Stealth mechanics. You start with a base range of seven. The range is doubled if you are in light or halved, rounding up if you are in darkness. Add one to the range, so it's after this doubling or halving. Add one to the range for each point of your armor's base strength requirement over 12. So heavy armor gets a, a, a bonus there. That's before the enchant any enchantments or anything, like the base base requirement. If you rested, then you have the range. If you're aggravating, uh, that's a really niche case. And then subtracting the enchantment level, the, the string of stealth comes dead last. According to this, so like the case we're in now, base range seven, halved in darkness, rounding up, which would be four, right? And half of that goes down to two for resting. And then minus one from the stealth. The math checks out. I'm going to have to keep resorting to this until I get a better feel for it. Um, the, the order of operations here is the, the part that's that has a profound effect on how your stealth works. So as we gain new armor and increase our stealth, I'm going to come back to this and just kind of see how it affects our stealth gameplay here. Um, this is pretty cool having one stealth range at the moment. Except that I want to alert these jackals. <laughs> Wiki stream, heck yeah. You feel like that article just told you that chainmail suck? So chainmail. Oh, you know why? Because the rounding up is huge. Because base range seven, whether it's doubled or halved, 
for lighter darkness. Then you get plus one for the chainmail. Because it has a strength requirement of 13 over 12. And if you rest, you round down. Or it halves your... Again? Your stealth range again, but it rounds up. So that plus one stays one. And then it ca and, um, counters the... Then you need minus, an extra minus one from the stealth ring. And all you're getting for that is an extra plus one armor value. But you kind of need to get enchant your stealth range to mitigate, or your stealth ring to mitigate. You might be better off enchanting your armor, your leather. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at those stats, but yeah, that's interesting. All right, well, these are just jackals, so who cares? I have an axe. Dude, another acid mount? We're gonna stealth this dude. Got him. Wait. I guess we're done with the map. Time to go downstairs. No, I don't think so. Half of this freaking map is missing. Where are my secret doors? I searched all of these rooms. It's probably down here. Plus three stealth ring. Oh, I think we chose wisely here. We were rewarded for our commitment to the the sub part, the suboptimal build and strategy. So I searched from here. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe it's because of the diagonal, but this should have been like guaranteed to be spotted from, from this room. I can't believe I missed that the first time. I really think Rogue should have more deterministic searching mechanics. Yeah, streamer keeps rolling 10% and it does not feel great. All right, these guys are wandering. Dude, look at this stealth range. I love this. This is fun. Oh, another enchant scroll? I'm here. Oh shoot, that's an ogre. We can sneak attack both of these guys in one hit? The ogre probably wrecks us in combat even with a sneak attack. Uh, not, maybe not with the haste charm. I think we take the sneak attack. He's off balance. I'm gonna use the haste charm. What's my chance to hit you now? 45. Oh, that's not great. But I can kite you while I'm hasted. Nice.
So I think this Warhammer is actually still our best sneak attack weapon at this point. I wonder if I'm supposed to always have the Warhammer equipped and then swap to the axe when I am not sneaking, sneak attacking things. That's a centipede. Curse items always negatively enchanted. Yes, they are. So this Warhammer is either negative one, negative two, or negative three enchantment. And it potentially has a negative runic applied to it. Although we haven't seen that proc yet. So I don't, I'm feeling like there's no runic attached to this. I honestly don't mind enchanting this even if it's at like minus one. But if it's like minus two or minus three, like that's so much negative, like enchantment inertia. I could probably kill 18 enemies with it now that I'm playing like a super stealth build and, and eventually I D it. I'd love to just find like another negation scroll and make it plus zero though. Or maybe we find like a sweet broadsword or something on the ground. I, I, a broadsword or war pike, I think I'd be fine to do a stealth build with. I think I like Caustic Gas better than Creeping Death. I don't know if I've ever gotten like great value out of Creeping Death. All right, how do we deal with the Centipede? I might actually just throw Caustic Gas at it. <laughs> or maybe I throw a dart at it. Wait. If I throw a dart at it, it immediately, and I rest, it immediately gets out of more than three tiles out of my stealth range and it forgets about me. Yeah, I think there's some good uses for it like that within wheels, but I would also need like some way to burn it or levitate over it, which I don't have. So I equip the Warhammer here. Throne Sanctuary. Oh, that's a good um, way to look at it, actually. Back to Wandering. And kablam! Man, why did you guys... Why have you all never told me how fun a Warhammer stealth build is? This is sweet. Oh my god, auto mod got auto mod got you for saying peed. <laughs> Twitch like really like over over tuned its uh, auto mod stuff. You keep saying Warhammer is the best weapon. It's okay, I I uh, permitted it. Did I search this room yet? No. Um, these javelins are just in time. I'll swap out plus five darts for plus five javelins or seven javelins. Wait, that plus five? I mean five plus zero darts. I could also ditch this dagger. I don't think I need it for acid mounds. I know they have the warhammer. It's probably better actually. Do I do an extra search to see if there's a secret room here? Do I have food to search? Not, not quite, but... I'm so paranoid with all those, like, 10% low rolls. Oh my god, there's a corner of the map I haven't explored. 
How'd I get all the way back here? All right, we gotta go check it out. Holy cow. Boom! Crusher Mystic. Where are they at? I actually want to like ID this uh this Warhammer off of these guys. Okay, that wasn't working very well. I need to roll 39% twice. Oh my god. It's okay, I probably want to use a second potion of life here soon anyways. Is that even the real hit percent? Probably not, actually. That is my negative 12.5 hit percent, but it might be... Well, what does a minus 1 on that turn it into? Minus 13.5? Minus 14.5? It probably doesn't change that much compared to the strength malice, right? But yeah, it's definitely a little bit worse than this. One more hit, dude. Boom. Ten more enemies? How hard can it be? Uh, what do you have? Creeping Death, Dagger, Infusion, Non-Stacking Dart. Life to kill... It was like... Two goblins, okay? Um, oh, the downstairs over here anyway, so walking all the way over here ain't bad. Dang, I didn't actually kill the jelly, huh? Um, I think we do equip the axe for this. I guess using the Warhammer to sneak attack pack enemies isn't great. Why is it so bright over here? Just have the way the light is uh, reflecting over there. Those torches. That's an ogre. That ogre is hunting me. Uh... I think I have to teleport this guy away. I don't really have the tools to deal with him. It's, it's a shame to use a charge of teleport, but I think it's fine here also. My haste charm's not even recharged, which is the one other like, well, I have a speed potion, but I don't think that really helps us. Well, the potion might let us beat the ogre by kiting with the ax and I'd probably kill it. I get hit by it once. I don't think dumping enchant into the haste lets me kill this ogre with one use of the charm, though. With the axe, it takes me, like, a lot of hits to do it, and that would only, only give me, like, 12 turns of haste. I think the potion probably does it, though. I could probably all also get far enough away with haste to reset its... It's AI to Wandering, and then maybe get a sneak attack on it. The thing with the Ogre is I don't think a sneak attack is enough to kill it in one hit, even with the Warhammer. 
Actually, maybe it is. Let me look at the, war the ogre's health. Fifty-five. Um, I guess we do kill it. What's the what's Warhammer damage? Twenty-five. Okay, we definitely one shot it. Oh, but it's negatively enchanted, so we wouldn't. If I teleport this guy, we are pretty much guaranteed to run into it again. Full pack. I think we roll with the potion of speed here. Hey, what's up, Barge? Good to see you. We are doing well. We're having a really fun weekend contest right now. I'm just going to roll with the speed pot. Let's go ahead and equip the axe. Let's see if we can just kite this guy. This is not going well. Uh, that is fewer than 45% game. Just, just throwing that out there. Ha! Huh, still got it on the last turn of haste, just like the last one. Or hammer it into the lava. Oh, I didn't even see the lava. We we would, I'd probably I would get clobbered though. I don't mind trading a a resource to kill an ogre this early without, especially not having to use any enchants. You kind of are expected to do that, and the speed potion was really low value with our haste charm, so that worked out really well, I think. Going back to Warhammer, I need to turn my stealth radius on. Oh, it was already on. I just am not stealthy at all at the moment. Okay, was I supposed to search down here? Did I do that yet? Um, no, the Warhammer is not negated. It's cursed. But it does not appear to be runic. So it's only minus one, two, or three. I would like to negate it. Oh, hello, secret door. I high rolled that one. Interesting. I was considering searching down here to see if there's a secret door down here, but I was like, I, I was pretty sure I searched it over here, but my vision to this specific tile is probably blocked. Negation will unprotect it. Um, within wheels tested that for us. A green potion. Do we can continue to um, YOLO potions for detect magic? I need to drop something to pick that up or use an enchant scroll. If I could figure out what this Warhammer is, I'd love to dump all my enchants into stealth and the Warhammer, not the haste charm. I guess I could start buffing the ring of stealth already. We're kind of playing into this no matter what. So yeah, maybe we just enchant the stealth ring. Honestly, enchanting the haste charm is never a bad move. These perform so well at low enchants. But yeah, I'm okay. I'm I'm good to go ahead and just enchant the stealth ring. The ring to ring gets your radius one after rest and light. That's actually a really good point. I just do that right away and start crushing things with our curse or our negatively enchanted warhammer. Um, yeah, so I blind equipped the warhammer because this is a late detect magic seed so far, and I started re reading scrolls because I figured there was a good chance that I had something that would uncurse it. 
And at the very least, I could use an enchant scroll on it. And I rolled protect weapon on the Warhammer, which uncurses. That's what we did there. Unfortunately, I read ID'd the negation before I found the um, protect weapon. You once negated a ring and enchanted it from plus zero. What ring was it? Honestly, if this Warhammer is minus one, I'm okay to just start enchanting it. I've played so many games where I just enchant like a plus zero weapon. I know a lot of a lot of players like won't touch a weapon that's not like at least plus one. But I think depending on what else you have in your inventory, that's a losing game. But that's that's another like cool thing about Brogue. It's like an extra layer of strategy onto just like surviving is it's kind of like two modes you can go into is surviving now or surviving later so waiting for a long time and just holding out for like items that will just give you much better enchantment inertia meaning that if you are you start if you commit enchants to a weapon that's already enchanted it's basically free enchant scrolls i think there's a lot of value to that i think as i continue to play brogue i find that the player base is kind of overvalues enchant scrolls in general. And you don't need like 15 enchant scrolls to win a, win a game. So even if one burns up, if you miss one in a secret room, it's not that bad. And if you have to like quote unquote waste enchant scrolls on a low enchanted weapon or item, it's not that bad either. I love finding like ancillary build items that you wouldn't enchant normally that are pre-enchanted. Like when I find plus three plate, it's like incredible stuff. Typical builds run into consistent consistency issues if they don't optimize enchants. Well, I think if you're just playing for a normal win, you probably don't have to, right? We can't enchant that. What did I click? Oh, I think I clicked O. I keep seeing the, the ring symbol and typing O. I'm glad that wasn't like my da my darts or something. Oh my god. Alright, we're all in on the stealth now. Another haste charm? <laughs> Okay. I have a plus one scroll, yeah. I'm supposed to quit my axe for this, right? Uh, I, I, I can afford to wait, actually. Oh, they're all hunting. All right, we're just going to throw the axe on. Starting to, it's starting to feel like another good floor to roll for detect magic. Although we only have one freaking potion. <laughs> we para hallow incineration or descent. Hallow sucks at this death too. I probably need to wait until I find a life potion before I start quaff IDing potions again. So I don't just get like wrecked by hallow. ID charms and brogue, that'd be kind of busted. They'd have to have like a 10,000 turn recharge or something, so you can only use it a couple times a run unless you're like enchanted to it. 
That'd actually be interesting. It would just feel weird because it'd be balanced. It would really have to have like a super high um, charge rate. What was I about to do? I was about to take off my armor. To fight this uh, acid mound. The acid mound is actually nowhere to be found. Levitation pot. I'm going to drop confusion. Um, these darts are still... Oh, I should probably use these darts to kill the... The thing. I'm just gonna drop them here anyways. Oh, it just doesn't recharge, and basically you um, have to use enchant scrolls on it. It's actually kind of interesting. Uh, I think I'm supposed to throw. Uh, oh, I can use food actually. Grab that. Throw some chainmail over here. I got the teak staff. Hey, firebolt. It's a good staff. Oh my god, you switched to hunting? Come on, dude. Alright, I'm just gonna firebolt you then. I was going in for the, the eel crusher hit. And just because I want to find out if this firebolt staff is... Well... I was gonna firebolt this guy, but... I don't want him wandering into grass that might have a scroll in it, so your life is spared for now. <laughs> um, looks like he won't. It's at least slash three. Nice. Slash three firebolt is a great compliment to any build. Now let's just drop the darts. I definitely don't need darts if I have a firebolt staff, I think. Oh, a negation scroll. Oh, it is on. Wow. Dare drink the text magic to check for red armor. So none of this armor actually benefits us for uh, immediately, right? Well, I think we can kill almost anything with the, the Warhammer at the moment. So I don't know if having more armor helps because armor is for like second attacks. Although when we're fighting packs with like our axe or something, that's when the armor helps. I just don't like all of this armor increases our stealth range right now, which I don't like. So I don't know if we like really use any of this armor, even if we could. Until we can enchant the stealth ring more. I feel like we don't even care about that. And I'm still, I don't think the risk, with all that in mind, I don't think the risk of quaffing Halu helps here either. I'd love to get the tech magic though, just so I can figure out what some of this junk is. Plus six ring of can't upgrade armor, exactly. 
You know what's better in the short term? Minus one protected Warhammer or plus zero unprotected. Um, with the Firebolt staff, I think unprotected is fine. Especially if I can start enchanting it and make it like actual like useful. Well, that's actually a good question. Because we're not going to, now that I've used enchant scrolls, we're not actually going to meet the strength requirement of this yet. So we're still going to be at like minus 10. Because I think you're at the first two points of strength deficit, still put you at minus 10, and then it tapers off from there, if I remember correctly. Hmm. Yeah, Firebolt is fine for acids. In which case, I, don't, I guess we don't care about protection. So let's just negate it. Plus, we're going to have inventory issues carrying stuff around. What an exciting find. There's a lot of freaking eels here. Alright, so we... Oh my god, what did I do? Alarm trap. So drop the Warhammer. How many damn eels are in the pond? Dude, it's that, it's that, uh, CE eel update, man. It's brutal. Plus zero Warhammer. Oh yeah. downstairs yet, huh? I'm gonna double check for secret doors here. Alright, I think we have to go all the way around. Unless there's one here. Secret eel level. A centipede. Go. Splat. Dude, turrets are just like not a threat with stealth. This is awesome. I get to finish my sir. Oh my god, that's an ogre. So <laughs> this is awkward because I have to go through the ogre or the caustic gas. I can teleport the ogre and just walk out here, and we're like completely fine. Or I could like use the haste charm and try to walk out of it this way, which is a little awkward. I don't know if caustic gas affects you every quote unquote action when you're when you're hasted. You should only act once per turn, right? I don't really know how that works. Yeah, if I chase it dies in the gas, which is nice. Cause I can't actually kill it with our Oh, I could firebolt it. I don't think we have charges of Firebolt, though. I'm going to go ahead and use ch um, Haste. 
Uh, no, it doesn't seem to help. Or does it reduce the damage you take every turn? It's only doing 2%, so I, I think it actually just prorates the damage. That's interesting. That ogre should be dead. It's kind of cool how having how having how nice having two plus one haste charms is. You can still use haste like every 250 turns or so. Like usually having like two lowly enchanted charms isn't that great. Oh shoot, that's a vampire bat. Splat. Damn, I thought I'd be able to reset stealth because of their flitting behavior, but I just wasted a lot of time instead. Recharge rate of 250 is about what plus 4 does. Uh, no. A plus 4 haste charm recharges in like 100 turns or something. I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I actually don't know what it is. But plus 2 is already down to 347. I think, I think plus 3 is close to like 250. Wait, we haven't found the downstair yet? There's like a super tiny like secret downstair room somewhere. What a weird seed. Do you think this could be part of the downstair prefab? Unless this like opens up. That's kind of close to that. I think it's over here. Oh, it's right here. Dang. How did I miss that? It's funny. Depth 9. Full pack. Hey, Stealth Warhammer build online. No detect magic yet. Dude, you swapped to hunting the first turn I see you? What kind of nonsense is that? Okay, I have an axe. I'm gonna draw you into the open. Bog is scary. Yeah, they, they both go for 10 turns, so in theory you can gain 10 tiles of distance between an enemy. Which is enough to reset stealth at range 1. Yeah, killing jellies with axes is totally satisfying. I concur. kills I have left. 
Oh wait, we already know what it is. There's no IDing on that. Another levitation pot? I already have one. I don't think carrying two levitation pots has a ton of value. I can start enchanting the Warhammer, which I, I think we're... That's like our guaranteed route here, right? Even if I found like an enchanted broadsword, we'd probably stick to the Warhammer. So let's just do this. On a bog level, that's a good point, Xylan. That's a really good point. Like, we, we just drink that, like, immediately before we leave it behind. On a level like this. Dude, with stealth, you can search rooms without, like, enemies in the room, like, even knowing you're there. It's kind of insane. Dude, I am enjoying stealth. Oh, look, I could walk around the entire bog. That is interesting as heck. I thought this whole, like, section of the map was going to be bog. We didn't have to step into it once. Where'd that spider go? Boom! Wait, what? Oh, there's a path. Do any of these guys have items? Uh, no, CE would tell me. Something hits you? What does that mean? No phantoms here, are there? Dude, I can't kill this thing. The heck? Use haste so I can kill the freaking vampire bat. I think because of the vampire bats, um, vampirism, it, it feels like there's more variance to their fights sometimes. I've had a few times where I've like, actually I died to one once on a build where I was just like cleaving them left and right. Uh, it, it like shocked me. Um, I was almost surprised right there that we got so low just fighting vampire bats. Obviously having low armor is like a big thing that makes... Uh, or I, I should say having armor, which you would normally have by this point in the game, makes them a lot more or less threatening. Uh, but still, that was surprising. I don't have a lot of health, so I feel like we need to like rest to heal. I don't have like a great luxury to do that. Well, oh, there's a bloat. I should let the bloat pop near that ogre. Or it's just going to come this way. is awkward. We gotta rest the heal anyways. I think I just pop, let the bo bloat plot, the bloat pop, if I can speak for a moment, and just rest here for a little bit. Which I guess I can explore. Slightly. We're still at low health. Another ogre. Hit. That's cool, I can go up there for a turn, and you don't get hurt. 
All right, now what to do with this ogre? Still at low health. I have a haste charm. I'd like to get its attention. Should I maybe do like this? There's an acid mound. Hold up. Oh, I don't have an acid mound weapon anymore. I zap firebolt at you, but I don't want to do it in the grass. Cool. Um, I don't know where we're at with acid or the firebolt staff. It's probably fully recharged by now. I had to guess. It's probably been 500 turns since we used it. So we're probably looking at... Turn 6623. Or to be back at plus 3. Dang, this guy swapped to hunting. Fast mobs are a little awkward with uh, stealth, huh? Okay, the ogre is now hunting. Now you are wandering. Oh, I don't have armor on? Thanks for pointing that out. I only have a 25% chance to hit you. And you have a 100% chance to hit me because I don't have armor. Yeah, I'm naked for some reason. All right, here we go. 74% chance. It's a little better. Uh, I'm probably supposed to fight you with the axe. Uh, that doesn't even help. I guess I'm supposed to use a haste charm. Okay, we're at low health again. I need I really need to get this Warhammer to in my strength. Like in line here. A puce potion. With that in mind, let's enchant the Warhammer. Grab that potion. Splint mail. More armor that we're probably not going to use. We don't even pick that up, right? If we end up needing like high armor, we just stick with plate mail. But like even that we probably don't use. I wonder if I'm better off just swapping the plate out for the splint in case the splint is runic. Like this build's never going to use heavy armor, right? Yeah, I think that's the case. I'm gonna do that actually. Let's just ditch this plate.
Okay. This acid mound, it's bolted. Oh wow, that already recharged. Actually, hold up. Oh, it died. I thought it wandered away. And I was like, no, I don't want you to get into that grass. Be a pretty good chance of me sneak attacking this spider from here, but also do I kill you with the axe? We don't have armor, so it's not like the spider being stuck hurts us that much. We kill you pretty good with the axe. Okay, I think we just go for it. Punished. 28% chance. Oh my god. Are you kidding? Am I about to die to poison from a spider? I don't know how the poison stacks work. So am I taking three damage per turn for this? I think I do need to tally this guy away. That, that's what, the tally was my out if things went wrong, like they clearly did. I figured I'd hit 28% before it got this far, since they're like slow and everything. But that was really unlucky. I'm gonna tell you this thing. I guess I should have fire bolted it. Jeez. Look, it was protecting gold that was hidden in tall grass. Worth? Splat. That's what you get. So I want fire M. Um, I tell you what. I'm gonna throw one of these confusing confusion potions at all those goblins. Which means I'm gonna throw a titanium wand down there, grab this. I guess I could have thrown armor down here and kept all of this armor. We don't really care. I, I just don't see this build like ever using plate. Um, do I try to heal up a little bit here? I guess I'm doing okay on hell. I guess caustic gas works pretty good over here too. We have no food? I throw food down? That's actually really concerning. Some dar. They're wandering away. One's hunting me. So he's actually not going to engage.
The other one's not going to either. Now I can't wait for the goblin here. Oh, now he engaged. That was a misplay, huh? I wonder how I'm supposed to play that to make him not blink to me. The thing is, the goblin was about to hit here, and even if the goblin can't see me, if he tries to move into me, he skewers me. I'm like 99% sure. Goblin's worshipping? Oh, I guess that would have changed things. Um... I guess I haste for the Blade Master. He's not gonna like kill me. Haste, equip axe. Only a 40% chance to hit. What was the, the Warhammer at? Maybe I'm supposed to use the Warhammer. 28 and it takes two hits. So that worked. Oh, shoot. That stealth radius is way larger than I thought it would be. Are you worshipping, dude? All right, I'm out of the light. Dang. That's all I was waiting for was the Dar. Uh, I guess I should run in here with the axe and wreck all these goblins. While oh, they're still weak from the cost of gas. Oh, they're all dead anyways. Oh, that's a lot of eels! And about to die of starvation. Yippee. Okay. Holy cow. Well, the bright side is there's nothing to do over here. Where the heck is the food, though? That's actually incredibly concerning. How sad would it be to die just to, to food right now? Does this thing hit me? I don't think it does most of the time. I gotta look up explosions. Is it is it four to five tiles? I forget what the, the range is. At least three tiles. I think it has to go five tiles to hit me, which feels unlikely. I'm gonna roll this. Wait, the Wraith got hit. I need to use a haste charm, haste charm to get away from the Wraith. My chance to hit you, 31. How much damage did you do to me? A lot. You're gonna start fleeing at some point. I 
Ricky just die, actually? Not quite. Um, I think I throw a javelin at you. Nice. Oh, man. I'm really concerned about food. How long has it been since we've seen food? I imagine we're probably due for it. I'm supposed to stop searching, right? It's dangerous. scroll Gas vents. Yikes. Food. I knew there was probably food on this level. Let's go. Yikes. Can't open this door because there's a vent outside too. Well, that, that works. All right, we gotta like this build's been pretty slow. We, we had we did some backtracking. We gotta like make up lot for lost time on the food situation. Um, I don't know exactly how I'd change my gameplay to do that. I think we just hope that things go faster now, regardless. We're like right up with the food clock now with our nutrition and that food ration. So if I don't play super slow now, we should stay on track. Start item counting. Um, yeah, we could. I wonder how likely you are to like just miss food if you do that. Compared to like saving turns. There's some kind of math we can do to figure that out. Dude, where's the next life potion? I haven't seen one of those in a while. Do I just ditch this rapier? There's like nothing it could be that we'd start using, right? I'm just gonna drop it. Even if it's like a rapier of like quietus, which actually rapiers of quietus aren't amazing, right? Paralysis, if it's like any good runic, I don't think we use it at this point. Oh my god, I just got netted. Dragon and horror slang. Uh, that's true. But I don't think we ever managed to ID a late game slaying runic rapier. So it's probably not worth playing for that. Actually, can you? How do you ID like good good runics like that? Maybe a seed that's generous with ID scrolls, which this one is not. 
Like that one seed from a few weeks ago that we we died on had a, a whip of dragon slang, which would have been like, if we made it that far, like we would have like rocked the Lumenstone desk because that was that invis build we were doing. You have to kill ID and see unknown runics. Right. And we're never gonna kill 20 enemies with that rapier, probably. Not with this build. I just don't see it happening. I guess we can try to carry it, but we're already having inventory pressure. I could drop like Fire M, Lev, Confusion. We don't need duplicates of all that. I could probably drop some of this armor. How many unidied pots are left? Six. With about like a one third chance of any of them being good. Like a 44% chance of them being good. We're holding half of them. I just don't want to drink Halu. Especially with our food clock problem. I'm waiting till I get life to start drinking potions again because of Halu. I think Halu puts us in a tough spot. That acid mount is guarding the... the gold. Shoot, I forgot about these nets. Ooh. We just bash this wraith with our warhammer when it's stuck in a net, right? At best, we could defeat it in three hits with a Warhammer? Why is that so bad? I mean, yeah, I'm still naked. Let's fix that. How much does a wraith have? Jeez. Fifty health. Doesn't the warhammer do twenty five damage minimum? How is it at best three hits? Oh, we sold the strength penalty. You're right. Forgot about that. That's definitely why. I think we still kill it all right with haste charm. And while it's stuck. I had to use a haste charm there because raids get unstuck twice as fast because they're they're fast. And I don't think it would have worked without doing that. I might not have actually gotten two hits on it. I don't know how many turns of stuck you actually get. I should pay attention to that sometime. Wait, how did they get unstuck here? There's still a net on the tile they were on. Oh, hammer knockback. That is what happened. Good call. So I knocked it back, and I didn't notice, but it moved forward again. Spiderwebs are seven to unstick. Nets are probably the same. So it takes them three and a half turns to get out. Well, that first turn probably occurs when they move into it. It depends when they move in.
See, I have another firebolt I didn't count for, so we're on 7442. Oh, we've uh we've reached gained all of our charges. If I'd known that, I might have just firebolted the Wraith instead of using javelins, but we have inventory pressure. I don't mind using the javelins. Raids are like one of the best ways to use them. I need to get to this gold. Our struggle as artists isn't about appeasing the crowd. Come on, fire. Alright. Rather, it's about the chasm, you say. Inside of ourselves. We create things as a reflection of this struggle. To study our perception of self. Oh, I can't hit it from there. Which you constantly strive toward. What an annoying net. This all comes from an understanding that I think right. aren't static, but fluid, like water. Be like water. Let's see, full pack. An ugly starting area. May end up using levitation if this is like infested with eels. Throw some stuff this way. I imagine we're going to be coming back this way at some point. Yeah, that's a dead end. A boatload of monkeys. What is this? Mud-covered wall. Is that a goblin den? This deep? Interesting. That should be easy, right? You died on 10? 10 was a tough floor, actually. We started having a bunch of raids and stuff. Dude, what, look at this opening. I'm supposed to throw a potion in there, right? How fast can I, I? I can't throw it that far, it looks like. Or is it only blocked because of the... I can definitely throw it that far, right? It's just not showing me that because there's um, blank tiles there. Or like, like Fog of War. Oh, no. I wasted it. I actually couldn't throw it that far. I thought you could... Th Throw potions pretty far, but I guess not. But hey, plus one inventory slot. Flat? Hell yeah, you got it. I'm actually surprised I one shot that ogre. We must have high rolled. Something kind of strange and interesting G Brogue did. You have the ring of propulsion that increases your throwing distance. I feel like that's such like a low use item that players would never really use it. I don't think that would be great to have in, in vanilla.
Yeah, I could see um, high strength having a higher throw distance would be kind of interesting. I agree with that. All right, I want to throw our stuff on this chasm. And I'm actually going to drop these potions here. Free up some inventory space. Um, let's go ahead and explore the left side of the map. Can we equip the axe to deal with these monkeys? Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna search. Lots of traps here. This monkey's gonna get in the water and drop my scroll. And I don't know if there's like anything dangerous in the water. I'm gonna kill the monkey with a javelin. Um, I'm in fungus. Let me step out of the fungus and firebolt the zombie. Does that feel right? And then I could probably just go and deal with the goblin den while I wait. Yeah, that feels okay. Rename gold to protein. There you go. Uh, oh yeah, I could have used the fire trap. Honestly, this firebolt staff recharges like so quickly that I just do not mind using it. Like we're honestly like kind of underusing it, but splatting things with the hammer is too fun. Scroll where? Oh, this one? Oh yeah, his gas. I forgot his gas extends the range. It's okay, it's not gonna hit that though. Oh no, what did you step on? It's not paralysis, okay. I think it was just caustic gas. Oh, you're gonna step on the paralysis now? Oh, you actually walked around it, okay. How much inventory space? I have eight items. All right. Let's see what this goblin den's about. I guess I'll keep the warhammer equipped. Oh, that was the fire trap. That is funny. Oh my god. Actually, I think we want the axe here. All right. Who's? Okay, one of you is shielded. You're all shielded. Okay, they're not, um, they're not gonna skewer me. They're all the way back there. So this is a kind of small-ish Den. I don't know how many groups of goblins there's going to be. I don't know if I should use another confusion just on like a group here. It might be better to save that for this group. I got to do something about this group of goblins. My health is already low. There's actually a room here too with goblins. I don't know what the best way to take care of these guys is. We probably do use haste to clear one of the rooms, and we might use haste again to clear another room. The mystics are what are really annoying here. Oh, I didn't notice that strength pot. We'll definitely want to grab that. What's that strength pot? Oh, you, you willed it into existence. It is strength. So strength will give us 16. We still need two enchants on the Warhammer. I 
feel like we're due for an enchant scroll. It's been a while. What's annoying is that these goblins won't wander because they're like worshipping and sleeping, right? Worth using better armor? The thing is, I don't know if any of this armor is safe to use. Cursed, like, better armor would, like, ruin our build. Picking off all their worshipping. Yeah, we can go in and out. The thing I'm most concerned about are the mystics. Let's go with the axe and see what happens. I'm concerned about my health. Use the haste charm. Go in. Okay, who shielded? The guy in the back. So now we have one shielded goblin. My health is getting low. Kill the totem in two hits. The goblin's off balance, so I start running. I think we do. I, I gotta heal up here, and we're not gonna gain any health if I keep trying to clear this. So I probably just need to go to the rest of the map. As much as I don't want to waste turns. We do have to come back to this side to do check the downstairs anyways. The only reason I came back here sooner was because the zombie was in her way. I think we just leave here. Freaking centipede in there. Um, this mystic will actually follow me to the, the door. Perfect. So that'll be easy to stop them later. You know what's funny about the stealth build is I can't actually like draw enemies into locations I want them very easily. <laughs> it's like an, an, an unexpected downside. All right, we need to heal. So let's just explore the rest of this map. Was there blood wart upstairs? There was, wasn't there? Because that room with the, the centipede. Maybe I just... Oh, shoot. That's scary. Freaking eels, man. CE and the eels. Was that infested eel? That's weird. What? It, can an infested eel even, like, plant spores? I guess you can get spores on shallow water, right? That's interesting. Um, I guess now that we're at full health again, we just take on the, the den. Oh shoot, I didn't even notice this goblin. How, why did he come out? That was awkward. I guess he's, he was from the pack and not worshipping. I have the Warhammer equipped, so I haven't killed him yet. 61% chance, I should probably just keep rolling it. I think we want to switch to our axe generally in here. I have like no health again. Oh my god! I think we want to hit this though. Okay, you with the axe. All right, we attack you. All right, proceed carefully. This conjurer. We can actually stealth through a lot of here and. Like, maybe not have to fight all the rooms. But also, the stealth... Like, you said that goblin totems are light sources. That was That's what was lighting me up before. So if I move, like, one tile, like, we could just blow up our stealth range, which is dangerous. My nutrition's getting low, which makes 
finagling with this goblin den kind of awkward. But I don't have any great ways to deal with it. My health dropped again. I could go ahead and use the haste charm. Maybe I use confusion. Can I get confusion down here? Oops. I don't want to actually drink it. Like this was like a great place to drop confusion. There were like a bunch of goblins down there. I don't know, I'm at low health. I think we just come back. I just hate like we're we're wasting turns. And that's like one resource we actually like don't have much of at the moment. Alright, we drink that right away. We're only at minus five with the Warhammer. That was actually a huge help. Oh, God. Ogre mages. If I got their attention, we could, we have like I could create caustic gas and then a fire trap. We could probably do a lot of damage to these guys without actually getting hurt. Some city vibes. It's been a while since I played Some City. The problem with this stealth is I can't actually. Wake these guys up. I could also negate the Ogre Shaman. It's probably more valuable in other cases. I'm going to Firebolt the Ogre Shaman to wake him up. If you guys want to... Beautiful. Enjoy some caustic gas. Yeah, blinking would be awesome. I was thinking that earlier. What is this trap? Alarm. You didn't die. I'm out of traps to set off. Oh, uh, you know what I do? Well, first of all, you're not going to keep wandering left. I just firebolt you again. Um, I just used two firebolts, right? So I need to take notes. Nope, I did that wrong. Cool. Alright, so you are dead. Wait, what? Why'd you summon a, an ogre before you died? Oh, what is my stealth? No, my stealth range is one. 
Oh, I guess... I guess for one turn when you're on fire, you probably gain... Dang. <laughs> that is funny. Oh, we instant kill these guys with sneak attacks now, though. Oh, shoot. I didn't hit him. That was dumb. Huh. This is a bug. Look at that display. Hmm. I was hoping he would slot back to Wandering. Alright, I guess we use a Haste Charm. My chance to hit you now. 37? Axe wasn't that much better. I think this is probably worth trying for. Wait, why is he permanently off balance? Oh, because he's moving into me. Oh, that's incredible. Because of the knockback and haste? I, I never considered that synergy. All right, we should go kill this wisp real quick. going the other way. Oy. I feel like we're not playing this build fast enough still. I'm really concerned about food at the moment. Oh my god, there's our life potion. Let's go. What am I supposed to do with this Wraith? I feel like I have to check that corner because it could have like gold in it. But also there's the positioning. There's like no great way to deal with the Wraith. I think I just leave. Yeah, we leave. If I had a Haste Charm charge, I'd probably go in there. I'm gonna try the goblin den one more time. Probably stick to the axe in here. I think sneak attacks with the axe kill most enemies anyways. Wanna drink ID pots before needing that life? That's actually a good call. So what do we have left? Paralysis, Halu, Incineration, Descent. Where do I do that? Descent is fine, we're near the stairs. Instant Hallow and Paralysis. Do I just like come out here and do it? Everything probably disperses decently. I'm mildly concerned about like a goblin skewering me from outside of Paralysis gas. But that, they, they wouldn't get a lot of attacks on me, so I think I just do it here. Oh, I did throw things in the hole. So I can't use Detect Magic here. I'd have to go down. Okay. Um, Alright, yeah, I guess that's off the table. I think I left a bunch of potions downstairs. I don't, I don't even have unidentified potions. <laughs> okay, that doesn't matter at the moment then. All I have are scrolls in my inventory. So if these guys were standing over an item, it would show up in the sidebar, right? I think that's how CE does it. Like 
Where's the... Oh, here's the... The Warlord. Okay. I could probably sneak up on this guy. Look at this, this room layout. I don't think we care about the left. It doesn't look like there's anything over there. Well, this is a room. Ace Charm's almost good. I think we just take the, the axe into here. Ugly. Um, well, something's hasted, so we don't go in there now. Do I just levitate to skip these rooms and just go fight the Warlord and get that Scroll of Enchanting? I think that's what we do. Like, screw these goblins. Ooh, why am I so lit up? Warlord is still sleeping. Potion of fire immunity we don't care about. I'm tempted to haste and walk up to the Warlord to one-hit him. Um, I may as well just make a step. Okay. Um. Immediately enchant the Warhammer. We only have a... A one strength differential. Trying to look pretty good. There's a broadsword. I don't think we care about that. I mean, I guess I can just start throwing stuff down if we're going to try for detect magic again down here. You have the fire in potion, okay. Don't care. Do we want to peek into this room? Probably. Let me see if I can crush the centipede real quick. My chance to hit you guys now with this thing. 90%? Get crushed! Alright. This has to be a wall. So there's nothing in that room. stealth range. Um, I think we equip the axe. We'll probably just go ham in here real quick, probably with the haste charm. Hold up. We want to splat this centipede if we can. Alright, he's going to walk away. Smart choice. Oh, he's coming back. Flat. The X. Okay, I need a haste. What did you have? Scroll. Nice. Watch our health. We have a hasted goblin. That's okay. We probably can kill the mystic here. They have a potion of invisibility, which is awesome. I don't think I care about this totem. Uh, I may as well hit it at the health it's at. Did I get the potion? I did.
Okay. No other items in here. So, not walking in there. Okay. Dang, we used a whole food ration on this floor. We're way behind. I think it was... It has to be worth it for that enchanting scroll. But geez, that's rough. Let's get out of here. And what's really rough is... I can't jump down the chasm at my health, so I need to walk to the stairs. It's just gonna take a while. Should I go upstairs to use the blood wart? I, I don't need to. Yolgash, welcome. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, everyone. We are playing the Brogue Weekend Contest. I'm having a blast. This is the first time I've played a stealth build. We're playing a stealth Warhammer build, and it's it's been passable, but not really, like, we haven't really had it online until I just enchanted my Warhammer, so it's, like, much more usable than it's been most of the game. So we're, we're getting by and having a blast doing it. How are you all doing? If you guys don't know Yulgash, he pretty much only streams traditional roguelikes, which is a rare thing on Twitch. If you like my channel, you'd probably enjoy his. He's a very good player. All right, I think we start quaff IDing potions. If I get descent here, I get descent. Um, I don't, I don't think it's any worse than the situation we're already in. So my pack is full. Let's ditch the rapier. I want to pick up all my potions if I do fall down. The banded mail. What do we have here? I'll probably just drop a fire imp pot. I have a lot of those. Okay, so here's all my unidentified pots. Let's go. Alu, awesome. What are the Brogue Challenge games like? It's just a um, random seed that everyone plays on for one week. And the there's like a leaderboard for score. And there's actually some kind of seasonal thing. I don't know how that works. I don't know how long the season lasts or if they're even actually like still doing that. Um, so they, I guess they track your progress across multiple weeks. Um, but it's more about just like, my favorite part is sharing like the stories and seeing how everyone else did. Because bro games, you all start in the same place, but they can diverge wildly depending on like what items you start committing enchant scrolls to early, or like you might like miss an item or like not tested an item that you didn't realize was runic and became like very powerful. So there's like it's a lot of fun just seeing what everyone else did. Whoa, there's a telepathy charm? No, I'm hallucinating, never mind. Got excited there for a second. Uh, Paralysis, Incineration, Descent. Paralysis is... This is probably as good of a spot as we'd get anyway, so we just keep... Cloth IDing. Hey, we got Detect Magic. Awesome. That is what we were going for. Alright. Yeah, seeds are a pretty cool feature. I mean, for something like this, it's cool where like multiple people try the same seed. And it's kind of the only place where score matters in Brogue. Because two seeds like will have vastly different like score potential. So like just like looking at score blindly almost has like no value. Except in the case where, and I think most roguelikes handle score well in this regard, where if you're a player who's not like winning the game and you're new, score actually measures like a decent, it, it's a it's a random metric, but it, it does okay. It's kind of like measuring your, your dungeon death, but it's like a measure of progress. You'll generally get higher score if you're doing better in Brogue as a, like a new player and getting further into the game. 
All right, so I think we drink life here to get rid of hallucinating, or do I want to drink the tan potion anyways? No, we end up throwing tan to identify it. We don't need to risk that. All right, cool. And I don't know what any of this stuff is, so let's just drink life. This is our third life pot, I believe. 20% health. Yeah, so we're at 50 right now, so it'll put us at 60 health. I feel like it's relatively late for that. No, that's probably about right, actually. You usually end up at like 90 to 100 health at the end of the game. I'm at 26. So I guess we're kind of on track for that. It does feel not amazing to have to use life to clear hallucinating, but that's what this seed gave us. Yeah, exactly, Yolgash. I think score is like the most pointless. Uh, okay, I don't want to call it pointless, but the way I treat score and most roguelikes is like I treat it like a conduct. Like getting high score usually doesn't mean the same thing as just like consistently winning the game. And a lot of the times they might be at odds. So I don't pay attention to score at all in most roguelikes I play. Unless I just want to like go for a high score run and then I play it differently than I play most runs. All right. So I have to pick this stuff up to see if it's curse or bless or all that. Um, so I know these two scrolls are bad. Malevolent one. I may have spelt that incorrectly. I do not know. Oh, no, I spelt... Uh, I spelled that right. All right, I'll get rid of both of those. Now I can pick up all this stuff. The wand is malevolent. Plenty, invisibility, and empowerment. I probably try to use test this on something weak. Is there some mild value to invisibility? I'm not gonna get any value out of empowerment or plenty though, I think. Um, the rapier is cursed, so we don't even think twice about that. Let's get rid of that. Um, okay, the banded and splint mail were all plus zero. I don't think we care about any of that stuff because we're playing a stealth build and that's like heavy armor. Is there ever a point where Bandit becomes valuable on a stealth build? This increases our stealth range by three. And when does that come into play? That's after the doubling and halving for the lighting and for resting, right? I need to look at the stealth thing again. So light comes first and then you add a point for armor and then resting comes into play. I honestly don't think it's ever worth, if you're like really committed to a stealth build, I don't think it's worth using any armor that increases your stealth range. I think you're better off enchanting your starting armor or like scale mail, which has better armor. Because to offset this banded mail with our stealth ring, how many enchants would we have to put into it? Three minimum. This is five. No, it's four better armor. So versus scale, that's three points in the scale already. If a second ring fell into our lap, yes, that's a good point, Wheels. Because if you have if you're over stealthed, then you can start wearing heavier armor. But without finding a second ring, you're, I think you're better off just enchanting a piece of armor. Now you'd want to start with scale mail for it to even out, so maybe there is a point where the banded makes sense, but I don't think we want to start enchanting our armor anytime soon, so that doesn't feel feel correct. Scale mail would be sweet though. We probably save this negation charm for just for uh or scroll just for scale mail that might be cursed. But I think we we lean in toward to ditching this banded mail, but we probably hold into it. Hold onto it for the moment. But I definitely don't want the splint. 
All right, cool. And I don't know what this whip is yet. Okay, so both of those are just plus zero. Cool. All right, we need food desperately. I'm about to starve again. This is actually a big problem. Um, I probably stopped searching. As risky as that sounds. Yeah, I found food on death 10. And we spent a lot of time on the last floor, which is scary. I should search less at least. Lev pot? I, I do have um, one levitation pot. Just to like run across, across chasms faster and stuff. It's a good point. That is totally an option. So I want to burn this acid mound, but I'm going to have to retreat to this bridge, which I don't want it to burn the bridge. So we hold off on that. There was a zombie up here that we don't even have to look at because there's nothing in that room. Um, I guess I have to deal with this troll. Can we try to get its attention? Dang. I did not break hunting with it. Um, so maybe I try to knock it into the chasm. We actually kill it in two hits regardless. I think I just use haste here. Easy. Dude, double haste charms is a kind of crazy like thing to find. What a fun find there. Okay, so this doesn't connect, huh? I'm gonna do a search here. Okay, this is fine though. All right, what turn is it? Eight, seven, eight, six. Now I can just back up this way and he, he dies pretty quick. He pairs really well with the Sneak Assassin burst. Yeah, absolutely. Like this build like came together like in a really interesting way. Wait, what was this? So this is recharge on eight, whoops, eight, nine, five, three. Hey, what's up, Mango? What a yummy mango. All right. But, ooh, the chainmail's benevolent. We need to try and ID this chainmail, I think. This mango tastes like slime mold. Indeed. Oops. Another malevolent wand. That's interesting. I should have tested them on the the goblins there. That would have been a good target. 
We're at cr potential Kraken deaths. It's a little concerning. Oh, how'd you see me, you spider? Do, do I roll the 41% chance again? I'm going to. Alright. We didn't roll, like, the severe, severe downside of variance on that. Like we did the first time. Okay, there's the downstair. So I think we do want to backtrack up here. Actually, this is a dead end. Uh, that does connect. That actually probably connects up here. I think we go up this way just in case this is empty. Oops. Thought I was moving, but I was I was hitting the diagonal. A mace. Um, that's just like a warhammer, but worse. So I think we don't care about that. Black potion. We dropped the banded mail. I think that's just low value, right? I think this chain mail is actually going to be better than the banded mail, even if it's like plus one. It probably makes more sense to use that. Wear chain? I don't know about wearing the chain, although I do want to start using it. Like, how does this affect our stealth range? Now oh, we're still down to one in darkness, though. One enchant to get stealth back? Yeah. So this is at least plus one. We probably do end up using this eventually. But until I can enchant my stealth ring, we're not going to have as nice of a stealth radius. And only in light though, right? Man, the stealth radius mechanics are really not intuitive because it's like weird calculations with like a lot of rounding and so much doubling and halving. I think what we do is throw this. Okay, so that's paralysis. I think that axe is still pretty good against a lot of enemies. Because, like, the Warhammer is, like, the ultimate single target damage, and the axe is, like, solid group damage. They complement each other extremely well. We are going to start having accuracy issues with the axe. At some point, we probably drop it, but for now, it's a pretty good complementary piece. Are we done with this floor? It appears so. All right. Depth 13, we're doing pretty good. This is uh, the halfway point of the, the, the main part of the dungeon. Let's take a, a break here. We're actually about three and a half hours in. We've been going pretty long, but this has been a super fun run. I am enjoying this. My first time playing a build like this. And it's becoming very strong now that we can actually like almost fully wield our Warhammer. Stealth Warhammer, double haste charm, and the complimentary Firebolt staff. Great stuff. All right, let's take a, a break here though.